Cheers. I'm Jeff from SkiAscentos.com. I'm Bob. How's it going? Welcome to our weekly Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Bob, how are you doing? Great, thanks. How about yourself? Good. Awesome. Good. Yep. Yeah, we got a pretty quick news week this week, I would say. Would you concur, Bob? I concur. Nothing, nothing major in the news, but a few interesting topics in here. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, first topic of the week, we're checking in on Johan Eliash once again. Uh, last time we talked about Johan, we kind of checked in on his first week on the job. It's now been a full month, um, and he's kind of, he's been up to a lot. Yep. He's a busy man. Um, I, I, I mean, if you have like a one-year trial. Yeah, basically has gotta, an 11-month trial. Yeah, you got you to gotta get it going. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like, seems like the type of guy that's really going to shake things up. Um, they've already had, like, two kind of big, big meetings, um, and he's made a couple important actions so far. Uh, one is the plan to hold uh, an extraordinary congress on September 22nd, um, where they will be kind of formally updating statutes and stuff like that, kind of implementing some of the, some of the loose plans right now and, and putting, it into paper, putting it into writing. I like how they put in the adjective extraordinary. Yeah. Before it gives it a little, Me little too. pizzazz. I don't really know what that <laughs> signifies, <laughs> but yeah, I like it. Um, the other is the formation of a a kind of like. I'm surprised that they didn't. It, it, the way that it was worded made it seem like they didn't have this before, but perhaps he's just expanding on it and kind of making it more concrete. But they formed some working groups and committees, um, some formal working groups and committees. Um, they're kind of focusing on everything ranging from organizational reviews of the, you know, of FIS yep. as an organization, seeing if they can make anything more efficient, stuff like that, all the way to marketing efforts. Um, so within a month, he's, you know, he's, he's doing a lot of, a lot of significant stuff. Yeah. So pretty cool to see, you know, we'll keep, Keep an eye on this as we always do, and, and we'll we'll provide you with any any notable updates as things move forward. You know, I don't think we'll we we'll probably won't see anything any major changes until that Congress on September twenty second. We should send a reporter to the extraordinary Congress. That would be awesome. We'll get, live. <laughs> we'll get we'll get right on that. We'll live, maybe we can do a live stream on YouTube from the Fisk Congress. That would actually be really cool, although I'm sure that we will not be able to do that. <laughs> um, second topic of the week, uh, French ski resorts are unable to, well, not unable, unable is not the right word, but French ski resorts are kind of running into some challenges hiring British workers in a post-Brexit and what I would say is a pseudo post pandemic world i don't think it's quite fair to say that we're post pandemic yet right. um, but as you all know french ski resorts weren't able to open over the past year so they're all really looking forward to opening for the 21 22 ski season um, but they're running into some some new challenges a uh, french publication called the local did a story on this which has a lot more information um, but it's pretty interesting and it's 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 a lot like the challenges that United States resorts experienced over this past year, being unable to hire like visa workers yeah. um, from South America and, and other places, because that's a, a common place for them to go to staff ski resorts. Yeah. Um, and over in France, it was very common that British workers would come over for the entire season, and that's a bit where a big part of their workforce came from. Um, now, after Brexit, that means that they're no longer part of the freedom of movement agreement, which basically enabled anybody in the European Union to travel and work mm -hmm. to any country in the European Union. Um, now it's it's much more similar to you know how workers come to the United States. They have to apply for a visa. They have to apply for a work permit, and it only allows them to stay in the country for ninety days. And French ski resorts are not very interested in hiring British workers if they can only be there for 90 days. Yeah, you'd want a seasonal yeah. commitment. Yeah, this, I mean, you know, the ski season is more like 180 days right. than 90 days. It's really double that. Um, so 
putting them in a challenging situation. Um, be interesting to see where this goes. Yeah, and like we, you know, just worker shortages have been really prevalent around here as well. So it's just, yeah. it really throws a huge wrench in the system, especially with these huge resorts that need to yeah. need hundreds, a thousand workers to, to staff these places. So, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, a much different problem here locally, but, you know, we're, we're in the heart of our summer tourist season yeah. in Stowe right now. And there are, you know, there are restaurants, restaurants closing a couple days out of the week yeah. because they just can't, can't staff. Right. So it's unfortunate. Um, hopefully they can, you know, get creative and, and find a way to kind of navigate this and, and come out on the other end. I think in, in the grand scheme of things, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be a good season as long as they're able to open it. Right. If they have staffing yep. problems, that feels like a smaller problem. Smaller problem, right? Uh, and it would be nice just to get those resorts back open. Um, on a more positive note, or and, and really a similar note too, uh, skiing has officially returned to South America after 16 months. Great. Yeah. So yeah, it's awesome. Uh, ski resorts in Chile and Argentina are finally reopening. Uh, they were unable to open last for us Northern Hemisphere people last summer. Last summer. Um, so. Great to see those resorts start opening. Um, they're still kind of dealing with the pandemic down there, um, as we are here and, and as everyone is everywhere. It's, it's not completely gone yet. Um, so borders remain closed. Uh, you can't, you know, you can't travel to and from those countries. It would be exceedingly difficult for somebody like you or I to go travel to South America and yeah. ski. Probably not impossible, but extremely difficult. Um, but if you live in Chile or Argentina, you can go skiing. Yeah, you get, you'll have that place with your country folk. Yeah, which is awesome. Yep. And kind of, you know, it's similar to what happened in the United States this year. People still traveled a lot, but I think skiing was more localized. Yeah, for and, sure. And kind of gave it a, a cool vibe. Yep. You know, we were, we were, like this season, we were skiing with a lot of people from New England. Yep. Where in, you know, in, in other seasons, we get people from overseas, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, just exciting to get skiing kicked off back in, in South America. Um, fourth topic of the week. My apologies if I butcher either of these pronunciations, but Trevor Kostanik and Scott Richenberger ha are the first to complete uh, what's called five in five. So they skied all five of Washington's volcanoes in five consecutive days. I think it would be a hard task for me to do one in, in five, five days <laughs> <laughs> that would be pushing my boundaries <laughs> well mount st helens is only it's like less than nine thousand vertical feet there's got to be a road that goes up part I'm of it pretty, right <laughs> pretty sure you could at least <laughs> knock that one off um but yeah it's pretty amazing and and really what makes this like I mean, obviously, the mountaineering and the skiing aspect is is very impressive, but perhaps what's more impressive is just the logistics. Right. It's like it, it, when you think about just like the travel time, you have to sleep, you have to eat. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that so much involved with summiting five mountains right. in five days, and it's not like a quick, easy hike. They're they're major. Right. You know, it's major accomplishments. And not like they're all lined up in a row. They're really far apart from each other. Yeah, so, you know, the, the two farthest apart are Mount St. Helens and Mount Baker, and it's a six-hour drive from one to the other. Yeah. So it's not like going to New Hampshire and, like, climbing all the presidential range mountains right, in, one se in seven other. days yeah. or something like that. You got to, you know, you, you have to travel quite a bit. Um, what I found most impressive about this, or, or maybe most interesting about this, is they did it during that heat wave. Yeah, could you imagine hiking out there in 100 degrees, but you're on snow? and? No. No, I couldn't. Actually, yes, because when we were out there hiking, <laughs> it was like 75, and I can imagine it would be pretty uncomfortable if it was a little bit warmer. But it was actually more of a blessing uh, than it was kind of a, a, a hindrance because um, they ended up summiting at night, mm -hmm. and then they would descend, like, first thing in the morning. Because oftentimes this year, you know, you have to wait for the snow right. to soften up and become a little safer to ski down. But 
nothing was freezing overnight right. during that heat wave. So it actually kind of it, it made it a little easier, and it, or not a little easier, but it gave them a window to to accomplish it. Um, and hiking in that heat would have been really dangerous for a number of different reasons. Right. Like just yeah. heat exhaustion. Exposure. For one. Yeah. yeah, like sun exposure and heat exhaustion. And then when it gets that hot up on those glacial peaks, you get a lot of ice melt, yeah. rock falls, stuff like that, which yeah. is not That's, fun to deal with. Well, it sounds like a rugged five days. Yeah. Uh, you know, not something I would be interested in doing. <laughs> One out of five. Yeah. One five. I, I mean, I had a blast when we summited Mount Hood, but I can't imagine somebody saying, like, all right, tomorrow we're doing yeah. that again for the next four days. Right. I mean, I guess I can't imagine it, but, again, not something I would be interested in doing, but extremely impressive to those two. And congratulations on being the first to complete five and five. Um, and that's it for Topics of the Week. Like I said, it was a pretty quick week. Uh, we have two edits of the week. First is about a 10-minute edit, short film, whatever you want to call it, uh, the surface skis crew at Mount Hood. So it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect out of the surface crew at Mount Hood. It's a lot of just summer park skiing vibes. Um, cool stuff. Yep. Very, you know, innovative, new way of skiing from the surface crew right now. Uh, and this was the most entertaining edit of the week for me this week. It's the winning run from Mountain of Hell. That, that, that is a nasty, gnarly video. Yeah. So if you don't know, Mountain of Hell is a incredibly long bike race uh, in Europe that starts on a glacier. So they start on snow, and then it ends on, like, hiking trails and traditional mountain bike trails. And it's, like, 30 minutes long. Of downhill. Of downhill. Yeah. A little bit of pedaling in there, but, yeah, 30 minutes of downhill. Um Totally understand if you don't watch the whole thing, because there are parts of it that are a little monotonous. It's all impressive. Yeah. That he's ripping the entire time. And but it's all point of view, yeah. you know, footage, so it... Yeah. Yeah, it's dizzying. It is dizzying. Um, if you don't want to watch the full half an hour, my recommendation would be watch, like, the first three to four minutes. Yeah, the snow part. When they start on the glacier, because that's pretty crazy. And then watch, like... The last five minutes, just so you can hear how hard he's breathing. Right. For downhill. I mean, it, but, like, <laughs> it's just crazy. wheezing. Yeah. Which, yeah, I know that feeling, and I can't imagine that long of a race and just being that, that exhausted. Yeah. And that's really when things start going wrong. Right. And it's dangerous. Like, it's dangerous. Not really you are on the side of a, a pretty steep mountain. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, that's crazy. Check that out. Um, that's it for edits of the week. Bobby, doing anything exciting this weekend? Hopefully, getting to the lake and going swimming with the kids. Sweet. Jump in some water. Full on summer mode yep. here in Stowe. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see you guys out on lakes and golf courses and bike trails. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.